Hello brain lovers, Gregory here from the Brain Academy. So you're probably familiar with the idea that we only use 10% of our brain. Is that true? And if so, how can we use some more of it? Well, let's check that one out. So evolution has given us the most complex and advanced biological structure in the known universe, our brain. And then, well, we would go, nah, I'm good. I'm not only going to use 10% of that. This is, I mean, it's just, it, it doesn't make sense. The first person to say this clearly had no idea how our brain functions, especially because our brain is ruled by the use it or lose it principle. Is it true that if you don't use it, you lose it? So use it or lose it. Our brain literally cuts out the pieces and connections we don't use and throws them away. So if we would only use 10% of our brain, that would make a lot of empty space up there. It's nothing. It's empty space. And the other reason why this 10% thing is nonsensical is because it clearly indicates a lack of understanding what our brain is for. I mean, the thinking process as such is really a byproduct. Our brain primarily deals with the incoming information from our senses. That's the majority of our neocortex here. So then there's a the whole coordination of movement and balance thing, which demands a lot of brain power. 50% of our neurons are located in the cerebellum here. 50%. And yes, one of the main tasks of this cerebellum is movement and stuff. So what else do we have up here? Oh yeah, um, breathing, sleeping, and uh, hormone regulations and instincts and stuff. Here, down there. And then there's also the whole messy, uh, messy neolimbic stuff with emotions and, and, and feelings and stuff. And as a side note, yeah, sure, we are capable of thinking rational thought. Well, kinda, as it is still heavily interconnected with our emotions, as neuroscientist Damasio pointed out. So saying that we only use 10% of our brain, 10%, is just ridiculous. It doesn't make sense. What is true is that we're only aware of a very small and tiny fraction of what's happening up there. Scientists actually don't agree between them how much we're aware of. So the most optimistic ones talk about 5%. The most pessimistic that I found speak about 0.0005%. Yes, you heard that right. We would only be conscious of anywhere between 5% and 0.0005% of what's happening in our brain. That little voice you hear in your brain, that conscious thinking process. You hear stuff like that? Yeah, I have thoughts. Only 5% tops. And this is fascinating. We at the Brain Academy, we love this part. The non-conscious part of our brain is a real treasure trove. By the way, the 18th of February, we're having a live session for our members on this topic of our non-conscious brain. We're having these live sessions every month, so make sure to join us. So when people say we only use 10% of our brain, what they really should be saying is we're only conscious of less than 10% of what's happening in our brain. So the whole idea that we might have some hidden superpowers up there that are untapped, like in Lucy, for example. Cells get together, take on one form, deform, reform, makes no difference, it's all the same. Well, that's just pure science fiction. Because of the whole use it or lose it principle, remember? I'm not saying some weird mutation couldn't end up giving us some superpowers, but that again is science fiction for now. And of course, I do understand where this all comes from. The idea that we're not using our brain to its full potential is actually a very real issue. But it's not about hidden powers. It's more like not using your muscle for, <laughs> for a long period of time. They will weaken and you won't be able to do as much with them. Look, uh, I don't have much muscles myself, but it's not like I'm only using 10% of them, right? Even though they could be several times the size they are now. Well, something similar happens with our brain, even though our our brain doesn't function like uh, muscles. But just like with muscles, it's factually untrue to say we're only using 10% of them or any other percentage. Still, there are ways to develop them and get them to function better. Now, they're not gonna get bigger, well, maybe a couple of percentage points, but not as much as with muscles anyway. Our skull is a physical limitation to that. So what will happen is the density 
quality of neurons and connections will go up. Well, there are ways to optimize our brain. And if you're interested in that, again, check us out at the Brain Academy because that's pretty much all we're doing. And understanding how our brain functions is a first step in that direction of optimization. So no, no, we're not using only 10% of our brain, but what we can do is improve how we use it. And again, there really is no way to quantify that. Sure, it impacts your focus, mental sharpness and memory. It will make you mentally stronger, more resilient, but even more important, it will impact how you feel about life, how you feel about yourself. A better functioning brain makes us feel more, more positive, more optimistic. I'd like to make something very clear. I don't have rage. I'm a happy guy. You see this face? This is a happy face. It fills us with lust for life. You just feel good, you know? And the other thing about the 95% we're not conscious about is to get to understand what's happening there. You see, most of what we do is automated behavior. Whenever we get angry or sad about something, it really comes down to an echo of something that happened years ago, sometimes even when we were small kids. They uh, started beating me on the 23rd of December, 1942 and stop beating me in the late spring of 44. And sometimes there's really no need for that anymore. We can free ourselves from so much emotional pain and distress simply by becoming conscious of the origins of it. By becoming conscious of why we do and feel the things we do and feel. And the other thing is we can give things a place. Experiences can become meaningful if we know how to give them meaning. Yeah, that's the kind of stuff we play with at the Brain Academy. Make sure to join us on the 18th of February. See you then. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out some of our other episodes. And if you want the real stuff, you go to brainacademy.com. Join our 300,000 students and start using your brain better. Brain out. Sharpen.